Today on Main Street Living. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. When friends or loved ones say goodbye to each other, they quite often say something like, take care. Have you ever wanted to ask them of what? Do they mean your dog? Your family? Your health? All the above? Take care of what? By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he who penned this letter to the Hebrews uses these same two words, but with a much grander view and understanding. Take care. But he doesn't leave us dangling on the hook when he admonishes his hearers to take care. He's speaking specifically of their spiritual health and eternal salvation. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you as our neighbor, as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God. And he bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May God, the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the 21st Sunday in Pentecost is found in the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 6 through 7. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice into wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth, 
They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of gain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteousness, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such a time. But it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in the, written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Take care, brothers, let there be, let least there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For, for who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all of those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No man is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all of these things I have kept from my youth. Jesus looked at him and loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty the maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Beloved in the Christ, it, it is my privilege to share with you the living word of God from Hebrews 3, 12 through 14, as the chosen text for this day's sermon. Here now, as the author admonishes and then exhorts us to take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. When friends or loved ones say goodbye to each other, they quite often say something like, Take care! Have you ever wanted to ask them, Of what? Do they mean your dog? Your family? Your health? All the above? Take care of what? By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he who penned this letter to the Hebrews uses these same two words, but with a much grander view and understanding. Take care. But he doesn't leave us dangling on the hook when he admonishes his hearers to take care. He's speaking specifically of their spiritual health and eternal salvation. Believers are to take care of their spiritual health Least, he says, there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. You may ask, is it possible to fall away from God? Aren't we saved through baptism? Well, let me assure you that yes, believers are saved through the divine washing and rebirth of baptism. It's through baptism that we receive the gift of forgiveness and the salvation of which Jesus earned for us on the cross and his third day defeat of death, sin, and the grave. But be careful. Don't throw that precious gift away. Don't be the, like the Israelites who left Egypt with Moses. And then while on their journey, they rebelled against God to the point that their hearts became so hard, the Lord finally, having had enough of their rebellious attitudes, gave them over to their sinful desires, and didn't allow them to enter his rest. Could such a devastation happen to us? Only through disbelief. You see, dear brothers and sisters, faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift leads us children of the Heavenly Father to come before God and ask for forgiveness for our many sins. As miserable beggars, we implore Him to give us a healthy spiritual attitude that moves us to willingly participate in Christian fellowship, reading and hearing the living Word of God, confessing sins, receiving absolution, partaking in the Lord's Supper, and continual prayer. These are the means, the tools, the Spirit uses to keep us drinking and eating, to help us grow in our spiritual lives. And thank God that we have these means to make us strong in the faith and healthy in our growth as His blood-bought children. Remember, beloved, Unbelief, on the other hand, causes us to want to be like the world that is around us. It causes us to relapse into our former selves. It causes us to be okay with carnal pleasures. Like, why attend worship when I can sleep in late? Why not stay out late every night and enjoy all the sinful pleasures of the flesh? Why not move in with my lover before we get married? Why not run over my neighbor to get ahead in life? Oh, why not get angry and trash others like the media and our political leaders do? Well, this list is long. But the point isn't to list all the ways of 
The point is to take care and avoid them. Avoid them because participation in such things that are ungodly leads to further unbelief. It's like the proverbial snowball that started rolling down the hill until it became an avalanche. Unbelief, according to one commentator, is the parent of all evil. And the very essence of it lies in departing from God as the living God, the fountain of all our life. It causes us to dislike and shun all association with Him. In other words, living the ways of the world will eventually lead a person to no longer believe in the path that Jesus has carved out for us. And we stand the risk of shoving the Holy Spirit out of our hearts, thereby falling away from the kindness of the living God. Your heavenly Father loves you so much more than that. His desire is that you come to Him and trust in His provisions in all things good and pleasurable, spiritual and eternal. His desire is to freely give you all the benefits of faith. To help us out because He knows the sinful world is ever pressing in on us, we are given the loving mutual benefits of each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thus, the author commands us to exhort one another every day. To exhort means to strongly encourage one another. What a beautiful picture painted with a brush of a father's loving hand. It's just one of the many joys of being a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. You and I, as the family of God, have been united as one through the blood of, that Jesus shed on the cursed tree. Grafted to Jesus, the living vine, we have been given the privilege, the joy, and the blessing of being able to help steer each other away from evil and into the Lord's grace. It begins with encouragement, and it includes holding one another accountable. Not just once a week on Sunday, but every day. It's a loving pastor who reminds his parishioners that Christ has risen. And they are indeed saints. The loving husband who affectionately calls his wife sweetheart and honey. The kind neighbor who is always willing to lend a helping hand. Yet it is also the loving parent. Yet it is also who sometimes must take responsibility and show tough love in order that the child become a good citizen. It's encouraging those caught in sin to flee from it, Remembering that, reminding them of certain truths like, what's sleeping in? The Lord's not in your bed. He's where two or three are gathered in my name. Nightlife only leads to hangovers and dull days. Marriage is a gift from God. Cohabitation isn't. Running your neighbor over to get ahead in life only makes him mad at you. You shouldn't be like the media and your political leaders. You should be more like Thumper's mother and Disney's Bambi who told him, if you can't say something nice about a person, don't say nothing at all. What a joy it is to have such a large family, as many as the sands of the sea and the stars in the heavens. Each brother and sister is used by the Holy Spirit to work and to care for each other by admonishing and exhorting each other to flee the deceitfulness of sin and hold on to the crucified and risen Christ who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is what gives us the confidence to the end, the assured hope of eternal life. And we wonder, how is this possible? Jesus said, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Precious saints, join me in blessing the Lord. Why, you may ask, is because He has chosen to dwell in the hearts of men. 
yes, in your hearts and in mine. We, as his beloved children, are guaranteed eternal life, and that gives us joy, the joy that surpasses all understanding. For this reason, you need never worry, dear precious children, for you have been chosen before the foundations of the world to inherit the kingdom of heaven. The author of the book of Hebrews, <coughs> excuse me, is none other than the Holy Spirit. Admonishment and exhortation fall under his economy. It's his way of sanctifying you that you be recognized in this world as one of his own. Empowered by our beloved creator, maker and redeemer, Jesus Christ. Remember, therefore, what he has accomplished for you. Through his death and glorious third day resurrection, he has taken care of you and he will continue to do so for the rest of your lives. For this reason today, we give thanks to the Lord that he takes care of us always. Amen. With the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus had taught, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. I'm Reverend Scott Seiler, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and one of the preachers on this program. Main Street Living has been on the air since January 6, 2002, thanks to God directing and blessing this program. For these many years, it has been our mission to help you to know and trust the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is free to us, but it costs Jesus his very life. Sometimes we use the word grace as an acronym to express this good news. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace, willingly given by our triune God because He loves you so much. Today you have heard good news like this on our program. Thank you for tuning in today to Main Street Living. We ask that you pray for God's continued blessing upon this program and please consider giving a gift to support this ministry and keep it on the air so that many others may know God's saving grace for them. You may send your gift to this address, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Tune in again next week to Main Street Living. And until then, 
Remember that God loves you so very much and that His grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, is something you can count on every day of your life. Thank you for watching Main Street Living. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and its member churches. To find an LCMS church near you, contact the South Dakota District Office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106 or visit www.lcms.org.